Hey everyone, it's Ali Quorum here, back with another IBD Live clip for you, featuring David Ryan discussing his take on the importance of earnings. Now, David is a three-time U.S. investing champion and former portfolio manager under IBD founder Bill O'Neill, so it's always great to get his take on not only stocks that are on his radar and the technical setups that he looks for, but those foundational elements too, like earnings. So check this out. When I first started working at William O'Neill and Company, you know, back in the early 80s, that um, I had exposure to um, something called a data graph, which was their institutional product. And there's only two things I want you to really look at on this. This is Pulte Homes. And it, it, there's just, and these are three, three examples of stocks that did really well. Look, if you could point out to them that earnings line uh, on the chart, and this is we went through, we looked at this. You see, those are the earnings plotted that that thin black line, and but also show that how you know, it goes all the way back. Each quarter is plotted, and you can see the relationship between what the earnings do and what the stock does. When the earnings are 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 going down like they did during that uh, almost hard to read, I think 1980s, uh, 81 period, as they were going down, what did the stock do? The stock did nothing, it went sideways and didn't make any progress to the upside. But look what happened over the last three quarters of, of price history and three quarters of earnings histories when the, the, the I mean, those were up 500%, I guess hundreds of percent, those three different quarters. And look what that, and, sh and, and is showing that on that earnings line. That's what a stock does when big earnings come through. And it's just something that you have to always go back to. And that's the basis, one of the basis, I mean, two parts of Can Slim are current earnings and annual earnings. And those are things that you really want to focus on. And those where you get those where you get the biggest moves in uh, in stocks is when earnings. This is a turnaround situation, and that's what you usually see in a turnaround or a cyclical stock. They have a number of quarters of bad earnings. The stock does nothing; it goes sideways to down, and then you see that explosion. And if you can get it in those first two quarters of earnings, then you're probably going to get a great move. We saw that happen uh, all the way back in late 2020 when all these fertilizer stocks started taking off and they had huge earnings moves and earning earnings turns. And you can see that uh, this Pulte made a great move. And then if you look at the, the next example and just key off that earnings line, this is Conair. Conair made a, uh, they make blow dryers and I think they're still out there. Um, but this is one, a little bit more of a, of a, uh, of a nice longer term earnings story, not as cyclical. Look at that earnings line going up across the page and then look at the acceleration. And so the stock was doing fine, but you also have to remember, this is a stock that had great earnings even during a tough period, even during a, a, a very bad market in 19, I mean, from 1966 to 82, but when the weight of the market came off, these and, and the earnings even accelerated more, that's why you got a huge move. And that's a, an example of a stock that has great earnings, even in a tough market, the stock holds up and it holds up and it holds up. And then when the weight of the market take, uh, comes off, then those are the types of stocks that can really, really move. And that's what this did, especially with accelerating earnings in these last, um, you know, those last four quarters. And if you can get earnings growth and then earnings acceleration, that will be probably your biggest, some of your biggest leaders in the market. And then, um, then the last one, yeah, uh, just a quick comment here, David. Yeah. You know, during that acceleration, uh, these were not earnings of you know a penny or a nickel a share, but thirty-two cents, thirty cents, yeah. twenty-four cents, twenty-six cents a share. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's a little misleading when it's you know three cents going against one cent or five cents going versus one cent. But if you can get you know uh, big earnings increases in terms of dollars, uh, then that's that's good. Now here's another one. This and this again, this is Dillard's department store. Look what the earnings line, if you can highlight that earnings line just going sideways 
you know, uh, you know, back, I guess, in the late 70s. It's just, it's just going sideways to down. The stock does nothing. But look what happens when those earnings start turning and accelerating. That's what you get in, in an earnings move. And that's why you really want to key on earnings. And I think last week I talked about it a little bit where what's, you know, e even this year, what, what's happened this year? Well, yes, you got a big pop in some of these stocks that have horrible earnings, but they're not going to continue. They're going to have that 30, 40% move. And then they're going to go back into hibernation until they, they start reporting some earnings growth again. So, Try to stay, don't, you know, yes, you can trade those types of stocks, but the stocks you always really want to focus on are the ones that have earnings. The more consistent, the better, the greater the acceleration, the, be uh, the better. Those are the ones that you want to be really focusing on. Why does this chart look a little different than the other two, David? I mean, probably because it's, it, I think it's probably, it's it, because it's hardly trades or back, hardly trades, back yeah. then. I mean, I, if you look at the average daily volume or even that's the average weekly volume. Average weekly volume. <laughs> I mean, it's in the, it's, it's below 10,000. It looks like if that's, yeah. if I'm looking at that right. But you know, that was, you know, that's a whole different time. I mean, Dillard's has gone on to do extremely well. Um, but uh, that's why it looks a little, you know, you don't see it filled out as, as much, but the earnings and price relationship is there and it will continue to be there uh, in the future. Also, could you comment about how Bill O'Neill came up with the earnings line uh, as a valuation tool? Because uh, I, I think many people might not know this, but on the left side, you have uh, a scale, a vertical scale for the earnings line going from 45 cents a share on a 12 month or a four quarter trailing basis, all the way up to $6 and 50 cents. And then you have this, you have this uh, arrow, which I think shows the current amount of earnings per yeah. share. Yeah. And is it, is it not true that he liked stocks that had not only a rising earnings line and a good chart, but the chart itself was actually below the earnings line? Oh, yeah. I, yes. And that's, that's something I would constantly look for. But it can I actually throw you off a little bit in that if you mm -hmm. go, go to the next example or the one in the middle there, the Conair. The one in the middle? To, okay. Let me, let, 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 me, let me go back. So go back to Conair. Yeah. Yeah. And and this is, I used to look for this all the time. I used to look just for that earnings line to going up and across the page. And I'd look at the price down below because sooner or later, the earnings, the, the stock would catch up to the earnings. It was like a magnet, the, the, the earnings line pulling the stock up in price. And I, you know, I, I would focus that on all the time. The problem became is that, see, that was a period when a lot of multiples, price earnings multiples were way below 20. I yes, mean, when this right. started, I mean, it was, it was below 10 and, and had a move up to 20. I think most right. of the scalings were, were 20 times earnings. 20 times earnings, right. Uh, yeah. uh, sorry to interject, but here's a, here is a dollar in earnings based on the 12 month earnings line. And you can see the stock is trading 20. So if the stock is at 20 here, like if the stock was 20 here, then it's trading 20 times earnings. Times earnings, yes. But and here it was started trading at six. So it was trading six times earnings. So right. it was very, very low valuation. Yes. And and so, but what started happening is, and this really worked well in the 80s, but you started getting into the 90s where multiples started getting higher and higher. Mm -hmm. And that earnings line would be below the stock. And in a lot of cases now, the earnings line, I mean, well, I, you know, I'm not looking at earnings line, but the uh, stocks have been trading, some of the best growth stocks have been trading at multiples way above 20 times earnings. So, uh, so you have to, you, you have to judge it based on, you know, what are normal valuations in, mm -hmm. in different markets. Uh, but it, you still get that same relationship, even, even if they're trading at higher multiples, that those earnings are up and accelerating and the stock price is going to be going with that earnings acceleration. 
I hope you enjoyed that clip. We've got another one headed your way soon with more information on how David analyzes quarterly earnings and how that can really help fuel stocks for big moves. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe to my channel to get updates when new videos drop. See you next time.